Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how organisms are classified based on their characteristics. You should then be able to describe the three domain classification system and finally you should be able to use an evolutionary tree to describe the relationships between organisms. In previous videos we've seen the enormous variety of living organisms on planet Earth. There are literally millions of different species. As more and more species were discovered, scientists realised that they often have characteristics in common. I'm showing you a good example here. All of these animals are different species, but they all have similar characteristics. Now in the 1700s, the scientist Carl Linnaeus began to classify species into different categories based on their structure and characteristics. In the exam, you could be asked to use the classification system that Linnaeus developed. I should point out that this looks more complicated than it actually is. The first key idea that you need to understand is that Linnaeus divided all living organisms into two kingdoms. These are the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. Linnaeus then divided each kingdom into a number of smaller categories. I'm showing you all the categories here. So we have kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. Now you need to learn this system and one way is to use this mnemonic. King Philip came over for good soup. Now in the exam you could be shown the classification of an organism, so I'm showing you that here for a species of zebra. In the exam question they might miss out part of the classification and ask you to fill it in. So in this case the missing part is class and I'm showing you that here. Now every organism is named from their genus and their species. So for example this zebra has the name Equus quagga. Scientists call this the binomial system and the word binomial means two names. So again in the exam you could be shown the classification of an organism and asked to state the binomial name. I'm showing you here the classification for polar bears. I'd like you to state the binomial name for the polar bear. So pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay remember that the binomial name is the genus and the species. So in this case the binomial name for the polar bear is Ursus maritimus. Now the key fact about this classification system is that it's based on characteristics that we can see. For example the shape of the body or the number of toes. However there have been major advances in biology since this system was developed. For example we can now use microscopes to look at internal structures. We can also analyse an organism's biochemistry, for example its DNA, and look for similarities with other species. Now scientists use the three domain system. This was developed by the scientist Carl Wurz who compared the biochemistry of different organisms. In the three domain system we've got archaea which are primitive bacteria. Archaea are often found in extreme conditions such as hot springs. We then have true bacteria such as the kind that live in the human digestive system. And finally we've got eukaryota. These include animals, plants and fungi. Eukaryota also includes protists such as amoeba. Now scientists use evolutionary trees to show how closely related organisms are to each other. To make an evolutionary tree, scientists can use classification data on living organisms, for example their DNA. However for extinct organisms, scientists have to use fossils, and this can present a problem, as the fossil records of many species are incomplete. I'm showing you an evolutionary tree here. Species 1 and 2 are closely related to each other, whereas species 3 is more distantly related. However, species 1, 2 and 3 all share a common ancestor. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on classification and evolutionary trees in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.